Hi, I'm Jason McAteer, and you're watching the Red Men TV. There's a lot of fume on Twitter about this man, Simon Mignolet's positioning. Let's, I'll tell you what, we've got it here. Why don't we just take it back? Right, you've got, let's say, Mares was probably, let's say here, but he was probably um, before the, yeah, we, the halfway yeah, line. Yeah. So he hoofs the ball, Moreno's there, it's Dejan Lovren, isn't it? Who's buying? Yeah. And he's running in here. So it comes in, it bounces. Now, when he hits it, when the ball's played, it's probably a little bit more like that. But uh, Mares hoofs the ball up here, it bounces. It's Mignolet's starting position. That I think what is what people are talking about. But when the ball, and for me, I don't, I don't, I tell you what. First question: Do you blame Mignolet for that? I goal? don't at all. I, I didn't even know. I watched it on TV. I didn't go the game like yourself. Kind of ignored Twitter because it wasn't a good game, and didn't know that anyone was blaming him, and would never have expected him to be blamed. Because from my point of view, it's a world class goal, goal possible goal of the season, and. There's nothing really the keeper should be doing, so it's interesting to see that people play with him. I think he's if he, he was the hair, no one is talking about him. Mm. If he was flavour of the month and he was a good keeper, he, he concedes that goal. No one even mentions him. It's because people expect him to be at fault for stuff yeah. that people are saying that. But I might be wrong. No, I I'd agree. I would. I, I agree with you. I don't, and I will be first to jump on Minule if he's made a mistake. Don't get me wrong, and you know I'll always say it. I will see it. But, you know, he starts outside the box, but the ball's in their half. Yeah. Where do you expect the keeper to be? For me, if he's there, he's in the wrong position. Yeah. Uh, for me. <clears throat> and if he's here, yes, he's backpedalling. But come on, that is, a, that is a strike. He doesn't touch the ball. He judges the bounce much better than our centre-backs did all day. What, the one thing that I would say is... I don't think he's expecting him to shoot. No, of course he is. Because doesn't. I don't think he throws his body. Like, Lovren, more than any of our defenders, maybe Sacco's on a par with him, will throw their body in the line if they're expecting a shot. And he doesn't. And he just sort of... I think he's thinking he's, he's going to wait bring, for support. Yeah, he's going to bring this down. Yeah. Oh, he thinks, and again, most people would. Like, So it gets to about here, doesn't it, when, he's, when the ball's bounced. And he thinks he's probably going to run here. And Okazaki or someone is going to run into the box and he's going to whip the cross in. Or he's going to tr bring it down and try and go round me. He's At no point is he thinking he's going to try and volley it 30 yards into the top of the bin. And he kind of gets into that position to prevent that, which allows the angle to go there for him. You can lose those type of goals. I'm not angry about that no. goal. I, I, again, I, I, would, I am going to play devil's advocate on it because I don't, I don't blame Dejan Lovren at all. But from Vardy's body shape, he was never going to bring that down. No. That's, yeah. that's the one thing that you're thinking, and I'm not blaming Lovren because it's still a world class finish, and, and I'm not blaming Simon Mary, and it happens that fast. But you know when someone's going to bring the ball down, he's not slowing down. His body shape doesn't give away <coughs> that he's going to. I think Lovren has perhaps, just for a split second, thought it and decided to prevent it rather than looked at the Vardy's like body shape. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he's anticipated something rather than look reacting. And, and we, we, it's quite easy for me to stand there and say this because quite often. Often I'll moan about people being reactive and not anticipating. Yeah. So you can make mistakes from both regards. At this time, it's Vardy's goal, and it was, and it changed the game. You know, we were in a good position in the game. That's where I'm angry. Everything that happened from this instance on. So the minute that Mares wins the ball back and plays the ball, <clears throat> I think. Yeah, you can call it a hoof up field. Steven Gerrard used to do that all the time. We used to love him. We used to talk about his wonderful range of passing. Ultimately, if you've played the ball and it's got to your man, it's a good ball. Yeah. <laughs> if he's oh, right. if he's played you're to right. the if he's hoof, if he's turned and hoofed the ball, yeah, and Vardy's standing here going, "What are you doing, lad?" And it goes out for a goal kick, or Mingle just comes and picks it up. That's just getting rid. Mingle like, would pick it up if it was there, by the way. Yeah. Oh yeah, he probably would pick it up and then run around and throw it out, and then not free even kick know what he's given. done. Not even know where he's done. Humble. But but ultimately, if it finds the man, you kind of go. And again, it's Leicester are unfashionable. Except Mares is loved by everyone, but Gerard does that. Alonso does it. You're like, oh, the pass of the season to lead to the goal of the season. But it's losing the ball there from a. It was, I think it was a corner, was it? Or we definitely I think so. Yeah, it was from. It was definitely from a position where we had a lot of people up there, and we had, we were in control. And yet again, we lose it. And Actually, I don't think that <clears> one was from a corner no, because Lovren's back. Be back. Yeah, I think it was the second goal that came from the corner. Yeah. We're getting a bit muddled up there. Well, I tell you what, right? You know, we've talked about Simon Mignolet performance on a whole. 
I thought, yeah, he, uh, one of his better games for us. You know, he did everything that he does. Which shot stopping. He's brilliant at shot stopping. He makes two saves in that game that are brilliant, and it's really hard to call which one's better than the other. Like the um, the Okazaki header, is it a header? Yeah, the way Vardy goes past Lovren. Yeah, and he tips it over, the, and you're like, wow. And then Schmeichel goes and does one, which is probably even better against Chan, even though it was offside. And then he goes and makes the save from Mares just for, he, Mares is shooting from just out yeah. the end. That's from the Moreno throwing. Yeah, Moreno throws. Moreno goes, here you go, lad. Have it and gives it back to. Gives them. their most talented footballer, most skillful player, the one with the most assists and scored a prick ton of goals. Yeah. the ball, the twenty-five here. yards out. And then he turns and hits it, and he makes an amazing save. So he makes that second save, and I turn to my dad, and my dad said, "That one's even better than the first. And I go, "He's gonna throw the ball in the back of his own net now." <laughs> And literally five minutes later, less than five minutes, corner, he comes and doesn't get the ball. Comes bundling into someone, the ball bounces, and we manage to quickly clear it. And you just go, because that's him. And I don't know, it's strange. Like Did you have to give him a mark <clears throat> out of ten then for the game? Eight. Eight? Wow, okay. And actually, because those two saves are world class. So they dragged it. His average, with one of those saves, only one of those saves in the game, it's a seven. Without that save, it's another Sam and Mingley. Five or six. So we, those, are we going, it would have been 4 0. Sorry? It should have been 4 0 then with yeah, those, if, yeah, yeah, if those exactly, without exactly. those saves. Um, the thing with him is, and I don't have confidence in him, and I don't think he's got confidence in himself. You know, when you were playing like Mario, or you were playing like um, Sonic, and you'd get like 100 rings, and you'd get that like 15 minutes of invincibility, and you could just ghost through the rest of the level, right? Other keepers have that. So, you know, after he made that first save, definitely after he made the second... What Mario were you playing? I don't know. I've just invented the game. I... No, no, you used to get, like, invi- oh, you used to collect, like, the mushroom that gave you invincibility for a few seconds, didn't you, and stuff like that. You see other keepers, like, the other top keepers, Larice Courtois, De Gea, Nua, they make those two saves in that game, nothing's getting past them all game. Yeah. Because they, they just become bigger, they fill the, the frame, because they feast on confidence, they've made those saves, and you just know, the amount of times shit keepers have come to Anfield, made two saves in the first ten minutes, and you just know you're not scoring today, Kirkland did it to us and we bought him because of it, Carson did it to us and we bought him because of it, and you just go, oh, well done. I've got no, I've got an absolutely no belief that he has that in him, yeah. I've, got the, I've got the reverse. He can have a great game and still fucking drop two clangers, yeah, can't he? and I've got the reverse. Oh shit, he, he, something in him addresses it that he has to be a 6 out of 10 goalkeeper. So he makes those two safe, so he's going to make an even bigger clanger. And it, I, and that's it, and that's horrible because I'm not blaming him for the goal. But I, that's purely my bias now against him and what he's done to me. Or what he's done for me to think that way about him. I've just got no confidence in him being a top draw keeper. So after the first goal, we move on. We made a substitution on the 66 minute. Vardy scored in the 61st minute or the 60th yeah. minute. We brought on Henderson for Christian Benteke. <coughs> um, 